Okay. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, dear colleagues, it's a great honor and great pleasure for me to be here with you in this audience. And uh, thank you for organizers for invitation. Uh, it's uh, my second time on this audience and uh, I have the mission today to share with you our uh, vision, uh, our results we've got in uh, Lviv uh, emergency hospital. Now we have another hospitals in Lviv uh, doing neurointerventional procedures. But uh, since uh, 2008, when we started the first uh, aneurysm uh, coiling, we uh, count uh, uh, about 1,000 aneurysms treated in different methods. Of course, uh, every surgeon present in this audience has its own big uh, experience. So we will be again uh, grateful to hear uh, your review and uh, your experience. I want to introduce our stroke team. It's a base of successful patient neurovascular patient treatment. Here are the neurologists uh, from the university, neuro neurologists from the hospital, neurosurgeons, interventional radiologists, uh, intensive care doctors, and uh, uh, our residents. And again, uh, we cannot forget about our nurses, our uh, technicians and other personnel. So we have the uh, choice uh, how to treat an aneurysm. We will discuss mostly ruptured aneurysms. We can plan either microsurgical or endovascular operation, depending upon different criteria. The epidemiology as of aneurysm is well known, and uh, it could be up to 6% of population. Uh, average diameter of ruptured aneurysm is about 7 millimeter in average, and the uh, irregular shape makes the aneurysm associated with a high risk of rupture. Um, and the common cause of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is the arterial aneurysm. In Ukraine, we have the high incidence of aneurysm, up to 19 cases per 100,000 of population per year. 10 to 30 percent of patients uh, that uh, die after initial suck and prognosis uh, is uh, poor for these patients. Uh, we know it because of different complications, rebleeding, vasospasm, and the less than 30 percent of patients are independent a uh, year after treatment. So the most common complications are, as I have mentioned before, angiospasm, intracerebral intraventricular hemorrhage, brain ischemia, intraoperative complications that could uh, consist up to 10 percent of acute cases, uh, aneurysm uh, rebleeding, and the subdural hematomas. So we are here on the globe, Ukraine. We have Lviv city on the western part of Ukraine and uh, other neurovascular units allocated on the different parts of Ukraine. Here you see Dnipro, here Kiev, uh, here we have Odessa, Lutsk, uh, Poltava, uh, Kharkiv, uh, Zaporizhia, Kherson. I could uh, miss uh, some centers, but they are now developing and we have new angiographic equipment uh, provided by government in different cities. So we expect uh, further development of this branch of neurosurgery. In Lviv city, uh, where live uh, 0 0.8 million of people, we have uh, actually our hospital, the military hospital and the St. Luke hospital that are uh, already equipped with angiographs and we expect a new one to the hospital outside the town uh, named Winnicky Hospital. In the Lviv region where I live two 
million and a half of people. We have uh, two more angiographic suits in the Drobovich and Chervonograd. It's uh, about 80 kilometers far from Lviv city and other units are equipped with CT in the smaller cities and uh, they can do just the ischemic stroke and thrombolytic procedures yet. So the result is that more than 90 percent of uh, Lviv region territory is uh, covered uh, and the uh, population can get to the comprehensive center in, within the 60 minute of time. So if we have then a suspicion of subarachnoid hemorrhage, immediate CT scan is just the one way to treat this patient, to manage them. And neurosurgery consultation should be done as soon as possible. Patients patient should be hospitalized in the intensive care unit. We have this uh, intensive care unit inside our department, 12 bed, are uh, serving for our neurological patients. So this is a rule that patient with acute subarachnoid hemorrhage is hospitalized directly to intensive care unit. To prevent re-bleeding, the occlusion of aneurysm should be performed as soon as possible and the type of procedure is determined by aneurysm anatomy and by the surgeon's expertise. We can plan the craniotomy, the advantage is the more reliable occlusion of aneurysm for a remote period, but the risk of brain damage during the retraction should be taken to account and closure of uh, aneurysm with coils is uh, less invasive and uh, uh, could be performed under the local anesthesia and the sedation and uh, angiographic control is uh, uh, well used to ensure reliable closure of aneurysm on the final stage of procedure. The time of surgery, we have the uh, protocol approach acute period that aneurysm should be closed, but uh, nevertheless, uh, different scientists had uh, different uh, points of view and uh, authors, uh, for example, noted the high uh, mortality rate for the patient operated with microsurgical approach during first three days, opposite to low mortality rate after endovascular intervention. But what is interesting again is we noted that day four, day 12, the results were mostly equal for both treatment options. So if we do the early surgery, we can prevent about 5% of uh, uh, bleedings. It means that during the first day, it would be recommended the endovascular approach with lower mortality rate. And day after day four, they recommend the operation either microsurgical or endovascular with total mortality rate up to uh, 12%. And with 5% of rebleedings, it could be up to 17%. So we have the slight advantage to uh, delay the acute microsurgical procedure if endovascular uh, procedure cannot be performed uh, during first days because of any reason. So in our department of neurology and vascular neurosurgery, it was founded on the base of neurolo two neurological wards three years ago. Uh, we have, during the last year, treated more than 2,000 of strokes for 162 hemorrhagic strokes, 75 arterial aneurysm and AVMs were embolized. We performed uh, mostly 200 cerebral angio angiographies and uh, seven, uh, 47 transcranial procedures. During the period of neurovascular service, uh, we've uh, performed uh, 950 endovascular operations and uh, 344 uh, microsurgical clipping of the aneurysms. And the uh, last years we used the mechanical thrombectomy, 
for the patient with acute ischemic stroke. <laughs> the unruptured and ruptured aneurysm had a different distribution depending upon the the vascular territory, the most ruptured aneurysm were operated upon, were located on the ACA territory, and the next on the uh, incidence were MCA and ACA aneurysms. So the age of uh, ruptured aneurysm, mean age was 54 years, mean size was a little bigger than uh, for unruptured aneurysms, 6.7 to 5.2, and body to neck size uh, was uh, favorable, 2.7 mil of millimeters. The operative mortality was different on the <coughs> different years. In some periods it was higher when we like it to be, but we uh, uh, clearly see the peak of mortality on the year of coronavirus was on the peak again that's 2020-2021 last year we have the better results 9% post-operative mortality for microsurgical procedures and 15% for uh, endovascular procedures uh, <laughs> Clipped and coiled aneurysms during the first 14 days showed the, mostly the same level of post-operative mortality, about 17 up to 20 percent. And uh, in the cold period, cold, uh, cold period, we've got the lower mortality, and it was even lower for the microsurgical procedures. We used the, as a rule the European and North American recommendation when the, we try to treat the aneurysm, every aneurysm within first 72 hours from the symptoms onset. And uh, here <coughs> they recommend do not use the grading, but uh, honestly, as every surgeon, we use the grading to make the treatment strategy decisions. And the uh, other recommendations that we follow very strictly, that we use the multidisciplinary approach, we always discuss every case uh, in the angiographic suit just after the cerebral angiography was performed. Uh, personally, me and some of my colleagues, we are uh, dual skilled surgeons and our other colleagues are neuroradiologists. We discuss every case and make a decision what uh, is the best treatment option. We inform the patient and his relatives, of course, and uh, if it could be equally effective, we try to make coiling first. If any handicap and we cannot do it immediately, we cross to clipping. And uh, we try to do it the same day or at least next day because we use another operating room for these surgeries. And again, we should take into account the competence, technical skills of uh, surgeon. So, uh, how to choose the method? Uh, here, of course, the intuition and the the experience of surgeon are of the significant importance. Any method has uh, it, uh, its own advantages and disadvantages. For uh, patients, of course, the most advantage is that in the vascular approach does not require the craniotomy. For us, it's not, not a big advantage because we understand and we explain for the to the patient and his relatives that endovascular procedure is the serious surgical operation that can lead to fatal outcomes and the, the craniotomy can be favorable in case if we need to uh, drain the CSF, if we need to uh, remove blood clots, and especially if we want to get the full control on the 
the uh, bleeding if uh, we use uh, suction control and uh, it's the for my opinion the most important advantage of open surgery because we cannot effectively control the bleeding during endovascular procedure unless we use the preventive balloon balloon uh, position and inflating it during the the bleeding so localization of aneurysm is of paramount significance as <laughs> cranial operations the, the best candidates are the patient with middle cerebral artery aneurysm because they usually have unfavorable neck to doom ratio and anatomy with anatomy predisposed for the coil migration and the endovascular embolization of course is the best option for posterior circulation aneurysm because microsurgical approaches are uh, extended and uh, uh, complex uh, to be performed um, to get to this arterial territory. So the vasospasm is the most common complication, even more common when the aneurysm rebleeding. It can lead to this delayed ischemic neurological deficit and the peak of vasospasm is on the day six after subarachnoid hemorrhage. We should distinguish radiographic vasospasm and symptomatic, which leads to clinical symptoms and uh, neurological dysfunction. As you see here, during intraoperative rupture, we note the narrowing of the magistral artery, so-called proximal angiospasm. We should always refer to distal angiospasm that could be treated just with pharmacoangioplasty and uh, we should always be aware about the good grade patients because they can be missed with diagnosis or diagnosis can be delayed because of atypical presentation it's up to nine percent of cases patients are presented with arterial hypertension meningitis or some uh, psychotic changes. So the diagnosis should be put on the uh, base of typical clinical symptoms onset and CT with Fisher grading. Uh, Fisher grade one is most challenging because we has no blood detected. And uh, in this case, we use the CT angiography to detect an aneurysm in case if we have Fisher uh, two grade or more or higher grade we used as initial test cerebral angiography and what's important if a patient has proven subarachnoid hemorrhage but negative CTA or MRA we always proceed with cerebral catheter angiography. Size of aneurysm of course has the uh, high importance in the decision making. A larger aneurysm has the greater risk of complications and re-bleeding and medium size aneurysm are more suitable for endovascular procedures and uh, small aneurysm the micro aneurysm with diameter less than three millimeter it's uh, another challenging surgical problem because of high rate of rupture during the endovascular or microsurgical procedures and next, the giant aneurysm, the fight neck, they are the best candidate for endovascular modern technique like flow diverters to avoid any intrasacular manipulations. Aneurysm anatomy and neck to doom ratio is uh, uh, parameters that uh, uh, define our decisions and uh, may affect both or either intracranial clipping or endovascular embolization. Aneurysm of medium size with narrow neck and small dome can be completely occluded with, by monocoil embolization technique. However, in other cases, it's better to prefer open surgery to reduce the risk of coil migration. And the wide neck aneurysm is the problem for any method option because in case of open surgery applied, uh, and aneurysm doom and neck is strongly fused to adjacent tissues or in the major arteries, the complexity of surgical interventions in, in, increases. 
Uh, what complications we meet during our routine practice uh, 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 making the endovascular procedures? In case of microaneurysm, we can uh, note in some cases the dislocation of microcatheter outside the aneurysm contour. Uh, the main, uh, the, the important is just do not withdraw the microcatheter immediately because it will uh, exacerbate the bleeding. We wait a few minutes and put the coil outside the aneurysm and slowly withdraw the catheter inside the aneurysm dome and put an additional coil inside the aneurysm, making the dense packing of aneurysm, like you can see here, but the part of coils are in subarachnoid space. That's uh, the only decision in this case to diminish the possible bleeding. In another case, we see here the microaneurysm of left anterior communicating artery with part of coils outside the aneurysm and part of coils inside the aneurysm. Other complication could be the migration of the coil on the parent vessel. Here it's the problem. We should use a snare to or stand to withdraw the detached coil. It could be because of premature detachment of the coil usually and uh, make the serious intraoperative problem. Another case, it was interesting case uh, of our colleagues from Dniprov with the coil pusher left because the aneurysm could not be detached and the, the pusher could not be safely removed and uh, the treatment decision was not simple and is uh, detailed on the appropriate article, also, article of our colleagues. These are the problems that we've met in our hospital. Here you see the uh, oil migrated to anterior cere cerebral artery. Here we have the tension of coil during its uh, uh, position inside the aneurysm because the explanation one of the explanations is that the uh, coil is uh, too long for this microaneurysm and the uh, distal tip of microcatheter is pushed out the aneurysm lumen. Extracranial and intracranial angiospasm could be the complication, like the arterial dissection could be the result of hidden tiny manipulation, as we see here, the patient's 50. Uh, five years old, admitted uh, after acute onset of symptoms uh, with NS uh, grade two, was diagnosed the microaneurysm of left anterior communicating artery during the placement of guider catheter um, the left uh, artery. We've noted the partial thrombosis of left MCA and uh, during a few next minutes, it, uh, it was the total M1 thrombosis. Pay attention to severe extracranial angiopasm, but we've made the decision to proceed with aneurysm coiling. We've put coils inside the aneurysm with some, again, problems because uh, aneurysm doom perforation and uh, minor intraoperative hemorrhage without uh, uh, clinical consequences. So after aneurysm blockage, we've proceeded with uh, thrombectomy using the intermediate aspiration catheter, Sophia, and uh, it's the result. We've opened the artery, MTC free, and the time of ischemia was about 25 minutes. So patient was uh, released from hospital, but uh, on this time of operation, you can pay attention to the origin of thrombus. It's the extra, extra cranial carotid artery dissection. Here we can see the intracranial angiospasm. And uh, as a result, patient was uh, had the 
left hemisphere edema on uh, early postoperative and on day five we've noted the uh, area of ischemia without any dislocation and patient was uh, conscious uh, uh, independent but with dysarthria but improving so we expect it will be okay so what uh, are the possible way to solve the problem of microaneurysm we've investigated in the past and uh, some mathematical equ equations are helpful to check the length of coil would be safe and enough to block the microaneurysm we put into the account the volume of aneurysm and the quantity of uh, turns that coil will do inside the aneurysm lumen and uh, it is helpful to uh, get the precise size of micro coil for example two by two or two by four or two by six etc so as a result we would uh, block the so small microaneurysm with one coil without any intraoperative problems other way to solve the problem is uh, to make the clipping of microaneurysm it looks uh, easy because aneurysm is really small oriented uh, to the chiasm and uh, the clipping clips placement is uh, looks not very challenging but uh, observing the clip during the next 10 15 minutes we've noted no clip displacement was the case when the post-operative period patient experienced the uh, bleeding and uh, on the uh, micro specimen we can see here the sliding of the aneurysm uh, of the clip from aneurysm and uh, the near the neck the small rupture that could be not uh, easily clipped during the procedure so what are the five variable factors to provide a good outcome uh, despite the treatment option is are the small size of aneurysm well-defined neck of aneurysm and uh, minimal or no blood clots inside the aneurysm buff method has uh, her own history and the microsurgery count more than 130 years uh, beginning from the 1885 operation uh, first conferred aneurysm treated with ICA ligating by Sir Victor Horsley. Other years, uh, the different uh, methods were used by Zeller, Dot, Dandy to treat intracranial aneurysm, and the uh, MCA successful clipping was uh, done by Walter Dandy in uh, 1944. The, endovascular method were developed during the last 80 years and the first uh, operation was performed by dot in 1941 it was the open feeling of giant mc aneurysm with muscle and suturing of aneurysm you can just uh, imagine this intraoperative challenge we should pay attention to Ukrainian the scientist Ramudanov and Shilov had presented their study of 120 patients in 1982 uh, with uh, long follow-up up to six years without uh, re-bleeding. Most of aneurysm uh, never bled, so there was the very good study of patients and the uh, the revolution on endovascular techniques was done by, by Guido Guglielmi and his team in uh, 1991. So the flow diversion as the next step of aneurysm surgery was firstly introduced in 2005. So what can we do our best looking on these complications? Uh, every surgeon uh, can feel himself uh, disappointed and even scared but uh, we should proceed because we 
how and uh, every surgeon has the majority of good results. Here you see the anterior cerebral, right anterior cerebral artery, aneurysm uh, clipped. Another case of cerebral left anterior. Another case of posteriorly oriented uh, doom uh, communicating artery aneurysm, uh, micro aneurysm. Uh, successfully coiled. Posterior circulation aneurysms, we always coil this aneurysm. We can say that uh, maybe it's our dream to make the posterior circulation aneurysm clipping, but still we did no attempt yet. Multiple aneurysms, we always define the ruptured one and start the procedure well, in the ruptured one, if no complications and patient tolerate well the procedure, we can proceed with coiling of uh, unruptured aneurysm. Personally, me, I avoided the simultaneous operations, but uh, I know that other surgeons advocate the uh, surgery on both aneurysm, especially if we are not uh, convinced about what aneurysm was really ruptured. Uh, internal uh, carotid artery aneurysm, posterior communicating segment coiled, and uh, uh, paraclinoid internal carotid aneurysm coiled. So the next uh, challenging uh, Location of aneurysm are distal AC aneurysm. It's about 2% of all intracranial ruptured aneurysm, but uh, these uh, aneurysm are always challenging. In case one, we uh, had the patient young, uh, about 20, uh, 52 years old with uh, subarachnoid intracerebral hemorrhage, and uh, we've uh, diagnosed the aneurysm of periculosal artery, so distal ACA aneurysm. So the decision initially was made to cross to open surgery, but after some doubts and uh, uh, some uh, uh, thought about this case, we've made decision to Iterated with coils, we've implanted three micro coils inside the aneurysm with good angiographic and clinical results. So it's uh, maybe one case from uh, last uh, ten cases when we really got the good result after embolization. Usually we cross to micro surgical procedure on these cases and the. Uh, we know that uh, actually uh, is uh, on course the trial of distal ACA aneurysm that were coiled uh, with success or with distal flow diverter uh, uh, implantation. So this case, for my opinion, is quite interesting on this strategy of treatment. And another case was the maybe a few days uh, uh, near the first one. We again were delighted and started with embolization of this aneurysm, but because of tortuosity of vessels, it was the uh, older patient, about 72 years old, we uh, failed to get access to the aneurysm and we switched to the uh, microsurgical procedure through interhemispheric approach. After the section, we put material clip on the aneurysm, and uh, actually, we did a CT angiography to check the clip position and vessel patency. So, on discharge, patient is uh, Glasgow Coma Scale 15 with no ischemic lesions. In conclusion, distal ACA aneurysms are challenging for surgery and endovascular embolization is option for young patient with favorable <coughs> vascular anatomy. Microsurgical clipping is treatment option of first choice for patients with tortuous vessels 
with high safety and safety rate. Uh, next is the patient with middle uh, cerebral artery aneurysm, challenging case with uh, big aneurysm wrapping the bifurcation and uh, it was 72 years old. What was the unfavorable? That patient has the, the hypertensive disease, arterial hypertension and diabetes uh, insulin dependent during the last 10 years. So after we detected multiple aneurysms, we've uh, checked the left MCA aneurysm as the one that was ruptured because of this irregularity of its shape and the angiospasm of M1 segment. The next step, we did the uh, coil we, we did an um, aneurysmography with contrast injection from microcatheter. We got information that our opinion, the neck is narrow and the coiling would be safe. But during coiling, we've got the occlusion of frontal branch of the MCA. So with uh, ischemic uh, lesion in post-operative period. Of course, the white neck aneurysm are the problem, but We've did uh, many cases of MCA, uh, mid sized or big aneurysm with high rate of success, like on these images as well. But we realized that white neck bifurcation aneurysm remain a challenge uh, and let us prove this point as for endovascular technique and uh, open surgery as well. But uh, what is important and what I like I found in the literature that the goal of endovascular treatment in, of intracranial aneurysm is preventing rupture, meaning secured aneurysm with or the, with or without the perfect angiographic appearance. So in complex aneurysms where perfect anatomic results can't, cannot be achieved or have increased risk, then remodeling is an acceptable option because it does provide the stability of aneurysm and uh, it is uh, classified according to modified Raymond Troy scale as uh, grade five, where we have the neck remnant that does not change in time, does not grow. So it's the satisfactory result according to literature for this type of aneurysms. And the next we've, we should remember about the modern options like woven endobridge devices like Piconus that are helpful for the aneurysm, white neck bifurcation aneurysm closure, but they need the anti-aggregant therapy, what is not always uh, labeled for the patient with acute subarachnoid hemorrhage. Data of our colleagues from Nipro, but investigated internal carotid artery aneurysms, the better way for aneurysm of ophthalmic ICA with superiorly oriented doom and supraclinoidly located neck, posterior communicating and anterior choreoid artery with posterior lateral lateral doom orientation and the ICA terminus aneurysm with superiorly oriented doom. Uh, for endovascular treatment, the uh, best are the Kavirnov's ICA aneurysms, ophthalmic, posterior communicating, and anterior choroid artery aneurysm with medial or posterior dolorin. <coughs> and uh, so the choice could be easily done, but of course it depends upon the uh, surgeon skills. Uh, personally, me, I avoid the, the direct surgery of MC, uh, ICA aneurysms, except make the endovascular approach because this open procedures. Sorry for maybe internet is unstable. So other important way to improve the results is the tailored coiling when we uh, use uh, very precisely chosen type and size of uh, microcoils 
And the monocoiling is the best option for any reason with a favorable body to neck ratio more than two. And the vascular stent assistance is the way to solve the problem for any reason with unfavorable body to neck ratio less than 1.5. It's one of our cases with uh, paraclinoid uh, ICA wide neck aneurysm. We use the coiling with stent assistance and stand was left on the side. Aneurysm, uh, dense aneurysm packing. And the vascular balloon support is our favorable for aneurysm with uh, body to neck ratio 1.5 up to 2. And uh, we use the balloon technique for this aneurysm. Like here, you see the again uh, paraclinoid. Uh, Posteriorly oriented uh, microaneurysm, uh, very type aneurysm of uh, internal carotid artery with balloon inflated on this arterial segment and with the angiographic postoperative result. And again, the flow diverting technique is the modern technique, uh, relatively young in our hospital. We use it uh, during the last four years. Before this technique was not easily available because the high cost uh, of uh, the stands. Now we have a few of stands uh, by governmental support, and we use these stands. This is the case of uh, acute uh, reblet uh, vertebral artery aneurysm of stand put on the segment, and uh, the result, clinical result, was good. And another case of uh, aneurysm that uh, uh, grow after the coiling, and we put on this segment the flow diverter as well with good clinical result. Patients are now following up. Of course, the precise uh, understanding of vascular anatomy has the highest importance. And uh, for MCA aneurysm, uh, the open surgery, as we've mentioned before, is the good option for absolute aneurysm. Patient D, 24 years old, uh, with NS2, Fisher 2, uh, the clip under the visual control, put on the neck of aneurysm. You can note here the one segment, you can note here bifurcation and uh, three segments of MCA. And uh, what we are dreaming about to get the device for ICG and geography, because we do not have it yet, we use the ultrasound checking, but for the safety reasons, of course, this technique should be available on the every modern neurosurgical center. The other case, how we che can check the uh, closure of an aneurysm, here, the rupture at MCA aneurysm, you can see the clip put on the neck, but aneurysm is not shrinked yet, so we were in the duct. If aneurysm is blocked, totally blocked, we open the aneurysm wall. Many surgeons use this maneuver on every case. If we see the shrinked aneurysm, we usually do not open it for discussion, but after the opening of aneurysm and cloth evacuation, we noted the bleeding from aneurysm and the, uh, forced us to put another clip and use tandem clipping and uh, after the bleeding was stopped we removed the first clips out so it intraoperative bleeding with suction control the second clip was put on the neck and uh, after the revision of branches we've removed the uh, pilot clip of the neck and left one clip so the clinical result was excellent in this case it's another case i have no angiography available why because the patient should come to the angiographic control and at the moment of operation our angiographic uh, equipment was out of order and we've operated with acute case with uh, the 
base of CT and geography alone. And we, you know, with uh, bilobular MCA aneurysm. And after surgery, you can note here the condemned clipping of this aneurysm with MCA branches uh, going on the fenestra and between the branches of these two clips. Uh, so, uh, what are the results of clipping and coiling according to data of uh, Hemisniemi and colleagues? But there was no significant difference in cumulative survival, survival times between both groups, but uh, the difference was significant uh, between the good grade and poor grade patients. And uh, in the first case, uh, we noted a lower risk of cumulative mortality. Uh, it's important. And the uh, second, that endovascular treatment and surgical clipping of ruptured aneurysm are uh, say has the mostly same result in clinical and neuropsychological outcome and uh, the vascular treatment is uh, significantly less often associated with uh, mri detectable brain injury this factor always should be weighted against the slightly poor total occlusion rate of aneurysm and need for repeated angiographic control. The results of borrow rupture at aneurysm trial, we've uh, followed up the patient during the last 10 years, uh, and they proved that there is no significant uh, difference in the poor outcomes or deaths between two treatment arms during 10 years of follow-up and uh, during next six years uh, up to 96 percent of clipped aneurysm were completely obliterated uh, compared with just 48 percent of uh, the coiled aneurysms after next four years one half of uh, coiled aneurysm again would recanalize because the total obliteration rate was just 22 percent and again what aneurysm could benefit from the endovascular approach what can be what has the high risk of recurrence they propose the pay attention to mri with contrast 21 weighted images uh, and they noted that uh, unstable intracranial aneurysm uh, uh, are associated with uh, major recurrence after embolization. They are prone to uptake the gadolinium. And uh, the accent is that the development of uh, MRI or another new imaging methods are very important to arise. Uh, to help identify the cellularized uh, inter intracranial aneurysm walls with loss of smooth muscles. That is the indicator of uh, possible recanalization or ruptures. According to our single center data as well, we've uh, analyzed our data about the, the uh, embolization results and the uh, the patient uh, with recanalized aneurysms had the aneurysm initially aneurysm with irregular elliptic shape and the uh, dimension of aneurysm very little bigger uh, bigger than 7.5 by 6.5 by 5.4 and the lumen volume was uh, bigger than 136.7 millimeters in cube uh, comparing with uh, aneurysm, which are in zone of relative recurrence risk, but had a lower size and uh, lower intrasacular volume. So we can make, uh, we can use different criteria to prognose the recanalization of aneurysm and aneurysms of high risk of recanalization are not uh, the best candidate for endovascular treatment because of the possible need for the repeated procedures in future. So to summarize, uh, the subarachnoid hemorrhage is always emergency. 
and we need to put this diagnosis despite of lack of symptoms and confirm it with urgent CT. Patient should be transferred to high volume hospitals with do more than 35 cases per year of subarachnoid hemorrhage. And uh, for neurosurgical treatment, the comprehensive entire care unit should be present in the hospital and the cerebral angiography and the vascular technique available. Rupture at intracranial aneurysm must be closed uh, despite of the used method during the acute phase of the rupture to prevent the bleeding. And patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage often have persistent neurological dysfunction, psychosocial problems. So further trials are needed to assess the best treatment options to elaborate new approaches and new devices for aneurysms and subarachnoid hemorrhage management. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I appreciate any comments and questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, Here are the questions in the uh, chat. Uh, can I uh, answer? If yeah, we have we have one question uh, from uh, from Aydin. Uh, congratulations from this didactic presentation. I hope your country will reach out of uh, out to peace soon. Comparing the results of end to end microsurgery, I always have. Uh, have bias. It's not easy to find equal experts results in a literature. After 1,000 cases, you can make proper decision. What's your opinion on hybrid surgeon? Who can do both techniques? And how is hybrid surgeon uh, percent pre percentage of your country? Uh, thank you for uh, your question. Um... It's an important question because I know a different uh, uh, points of view, but uh, the one point of view that I do like really that uh, neurovascular surgeons should have the dual expertise skills as myself I have, uh, but uh, other colleagues, uh, they uh, uh, are prone to think that uh, doing two types of surgery, you cannot be dedicated to one type of surgery and you cannot be the best on this area, particular area like endovascular either or microsurgical treatment. So uh, I have no answer. I use both methods in my practice, so I believe that it's the best way, of course. High volume of patient, it's very important if you have uh, hundreds of cases microsurgically or endovascularly treated, you will be an expert. If you have just a few decades of patient, it will lead to worse results. So in our, in our uh, institution, the ratio between endovascular and open procedure is about 3 to 1, 4 to 1, depending on the year. And uh, in our institution, again, we have uh, four uh, surgeons who practice neurovascular procedures. Two of them are just the endovascular, and uh, two of us are of dual, uh, or as you name it, hybrid surgeons. In our country, I know a few hybrid surgeons, uh, uh, it's about uh, three or four people, I think. Other practice either neurosurgical or endovascular approach. We have uh, another question from Nana Tranjalation from Georgia. Thank you for your uh, wonderful lecture. I would like to ask uh, questions. While determining the best treatment strategy of a particular patient, and there is, do you involve patients and their families uh, uh, in the decision-making process for treatment? Uh, 
Yes, of course. Thank you for the question, Nana. I've uh, mentioned it shortly in my presentation. We always discuss it with relatives. And the reason for it is first the prognosis of patient because they often uh, think that endovascular procedure is something like the just uh, needle to the skin and nothing else. We should explain the possible risks and risk of the native course of disease, risk of surgical procedure, etc. Even if we plan the mini invasive endovascular coiling or other treatment. And uh, what is important again, that in some cases we need the relatives to buy some devices, as you know, and uh, we should discuss it before procedure as well. If we uh, make a decision on the what benefit would be on the side of microsurgery, we explain why for the patient. And uh, again, we discuss the risk. So we are always involved. What about patient? Patient uh, can give his consent. Okay, I agree to be operated upon. But we do not uh, explain very detailedly to him the possible risks and possible uh, features of any procedure because uh, I think it's, uh, it does not work. He, 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 he cannot uh, treat it uh, adequately being uh, suffering from the hemorrhage, from the stroke, I think so. Mm. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, uh, has a war affected to your surgical practice? Do you have any restrictions for the government regarding healthcare and financial support? Again, from Nana. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, uh, for my opinion, I was the believer uh, from one side that endovascular technique has the big future and there's more, more than technique and more uh, suitable than the uh, clipping. But uh, at the same time, I always was the fanatic uh, open surgeon because if you are not fanatic surgeon, open surgeon, you can not support your skills because you need to steal with patients in some cases from the angio room to make the open procedure. Even if you see many advantages, other people do not see it. And you should prove it by your good results, by your convenience, etc., etc. So, uh, in last years, the trials that proved the equal results of both options are very delighted for myself in the sense of treatment decisions. I mean BRAT, uh, I mean uh, late ISAT, uh, I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, is, there, is there any recent uh, research or cl clinical trial related to aneurysm treatment that has influenced your practice? Yeah, I, I will rather answer it. It's question number two. Yeah. Question number three about war. Yes, has the war affected? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's uh, very uh, painful for us, of course, and uh, on the east of Ukraine, they suffer much more because of uh, bombing, because of uh, wounds, uh, battle wounds of vessels. They have very good practice in Dnipro, for example, in uh, other eastern cities to treat the wounds, uh, gun wounds of uh, arteries, of intracranial arteries. And it's very, very interesting cases they present in their conferences. In our uh, region, in the western part of Ukraine, we are uh, in the relative calm here and uh, we have more patients. We have patients who are transmitted from the eastern part of Ukraine. We have more strokes. Of course, we have uh, no possibility to plan our job, for example, like in the peace time. We know that next year or next month we will get the support like 
15 stand, 40 coils, for example, etc. Now we can wait for the governmental uh, supply uh, during the few months, and nobody knows when will it come or will it come at least uh, during the next year. But uh, we have a very big support from our friends from abroad, uh, from Poland, uh, from uh, Argentina, from uh, USA, from different countries. Uh, and uh, it's very, very important because we have more equipment, we have consumables that we can use free of charge for patients, for our soldiers, etc. So it's very helpful really helpful in this hard time for us. Hope everything will be okay very soon. Uh, we have another question from Mehmet, she uh, Mehmet Shekhar from Alania. Uh, he's asking what uh, what is it, what, what do you think about treatment of, of the blister type aneurysm? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, blister like aneurysm, we are always uh, challenging because the thin wall and the high uh, re bleeding rate and uh, high intraoperative bleeding rate up to 50% during open procedures and uh, uh, endovascular intrasacular manipulations here are, they are much more risky even when the microsurgical clipping. So in my opinion, the best option for blister-like aneurysm is still the flow diverting. Do you use in a flow diverter in acute stage? In acute stage, if the patient suffers from rebleeding, we try to delay him at least up to 14 days to administer the anti-platelet therapy. And if patient uh, has the rebleeding, we proceed with uh, out-of-label intraoperative load and uh, stent uh, impl implantation. Maybe it's not the best way to wait for the second bleeding, but we have to have the very strong, uh, very strong reason to make this out of label procedure because one third of flow diverter, as you know, uh, can be thrombosed and uh, the antiplatelet therapy, the dual antiplatelet therapy is risky for the patient with bleeding. So here we can find another decision to use the low dose and after initial hemorrhage and put the, put the stand on. But uh, if we calculate the risk of rebleeding, it's about 1% per day after day number one. So the risk of intraoperative complication is a little bit higher during the acute period. So I think it's safer to wait and uh, postpone the surgery up to day 14. Okay. Do you do you, do you use a new generation antiplatelet therapy like uh, Agrasta to decrease this kind of complication? Uh, we have no Agrastat. Uh, what is it your policy actually? Our policy is uh, we use uh, the ICA with uh, Brilinta uh, when we want to be sure about its uh, effect because we have no possibility to check the resistance to clopidogrel yet. And uh, after the one month, we uh, switch patient to clopidogrel. And uh, if any intraoperative pro problems, we use uh, integralin intraoperatively. Yes. Okay. Intraven intravenous. Intra intra arterial. No, intra. It, uh, it is out of label to use it intra arterial. We you use... don't have intra arterial. I mean, agrasta or some some new generation antiplatelet. In Europe, uh, for intra arterial. Injection, we have uh, uh, labeled just uh, urokinaza, streptokinaza from the thrombolytic, so we cannot even use... Thrombolytic, I mean antiplatelet like Reopro, like Agrasta, like... Uh... I don't understand. No, we have not. Okay. Okay. We have a new question. Uh, thank you for your beautiful lectures. 
how do you manage financial issues, especially when patients pay for procedures and devices out of uh, pocket? Thank you for the question. It's again the, one of painful points in our uh, job because uh, consumables are really expensive and uh, if we have any possibility to provide for the patient free of charge with equipment free of charge, we use with possibility. It, uh, uh, it uh, concerns uh, coils, uh, micro catheters, uh, guiding catheters, etc. If we have no other way to decide the problem, we explain it to patient uh, how we manage it. Okay, we explain that we will use the instruments for the sum, for example, 200,000, for example. We give the financial support, the governmental supply, we give the some maybe charity instruments for the 180 and uh, 20 uh, hundred should be paid by patients. So usually we understand it because we want to get the best result of the procedure, not just to do something. And uh, if it's uh, in most cases, it does work. Yes. Thank you. Uh, as I see also uh, from your cases, uh, uh, mostly you, you like to use a simple coiling during the acute stage. Why you don't use like balloon remodeling? I think it's more safe, at least for me, uh, when when you have uh, intra intraop rupture, it's more easy to to manage. Yes, if in case of interoperative rupture, it would be helpful. But for my op my opinion, on the proximal arteries or if you have uh, provided the micro balloon like micro scepter you can use it in the vessel of small caliber as well but most of these monocoiled aneurysms were distal mca distal aca aneurysms so the balloon remodeling is a little bit problematic because to put inside the spastic uh, artery lumen an additional micro catheter and additional balloon it's uh, is for my opinion uh, make the high risk of thrombotic complication during procedure and uh, if we have the prognosis of coil migration white neck aneurysm not uh, the widest one but uh, the ratio about 1.5 we prognose the possible need for uh, balloon support, we put the balloon uh, near the aneurysm neck, we even sometimes do not inflate it. It provides the support for coils on deflated condition. And uh, in case of rupture, of course, it could be deflated. Uh, okay, but uh, you uh, noted it very correctly. We maybe underuse the balloon technique because of lack of balloons. We use it uh, about in the 20, 25 percent of all cases. It's true. Okay, thank you. We have one question. Thank you for for your good presentation. How about vasospasm issue after surgery? Do you have any specific uh, therapy for vasospasm? Uh, from Hassan Karabagli from from Turkey. Yeah, thank you for the question, uh, If we note the uh, severe intraoperative angiospasm or proximal angiospasm. Of course, we use the pharmacoangioplasty. In case of acute angiospasm, like the reaction for the procedure, usually enough, and we make the papaverin injection. 2.5% papaverin, 2 milliliters diluted, uh, diluted on the 20 milliliter of saline. And the uh, injection should be really slow, about one milliliter per minute, because uh, it's dangerous to do it uh, quicker. And uh, if it's acute angiospasm, it helps in 100% uh, of cases. 
if we have the postoperative angiospasm uh, day or a few days after and we know the clinical deterioration we put the patient on geographic uh, angiograph and make uh, uh, make doppler dopplerography if they prove the angiospasm we make ct if no ischemia we can proceed with angiography if proximal segmental vasospasm we can use the balloon angioplasty if no inject the same the papaverin or nimodipine we avoid nimodipine because of pressure possible pressure fall but uh, we do it in the some uh, selected cases not routinely I, I, sh I should tell it it's not routine practice the post-operative injection of uh, pharmacodilators yes but during procedure papaverin works very well thank you uh, I, I also I want to ask again regarding balloon. I I am I'm fan of balloon actually, because uh, with balloon actually uh, rate of recanalization I think is uh, more low than without balloon because uh, packing density is more when you when you use balloon, and I think uh, during the acute stage when you are doing in acute like uh, ultra early or early stage, you don't have other spasm. And it's it's uh, very easy to put balloon in and extra safe. Uh, and also you can put more coils and package density is more, I think uh, it's it's more more safe. And I also I have one, one question. What's about uh, uh, microsurgery? What do you use to control uh, to control purient artery patency, do you, do you use a micro Doppler or fluorescein or ICG? Uh, yeah, we use the meticulous revision of the branches, clip branches. Uh, first, where the clip are closed, uh, we look for any tiny vessel. If it's needed, we change the clip position. And uh, the micro doctor, yes. We have no ICG, we have new Tivato 700 microscope, but uh, we uh, bought uh, no uh, block for the ICG yet. Uh, so we wait for this technique as well. Uh, it's very helpful, I, I believe, yes. What about control DSA? You are a hybrid neurosurgeon, do you use a control GSA uh, more more early stage, I mean, after clipping same day or same after the, I mean, immediate after the operation? Yeah, I am in, in, in doubt because for my opinion, the best uh, diagnostic post-operative option is really DCA because other options, they give no information, especially in case of micro aneurysm. If you operate upon the aneurysm of middle size, eight, 10 millimeter. After CT and geography, you can get an information, but at least the body is empty. Uh, for micro aneurysms, it's not helpful. So you can uh, miss the problem and patient will re-bleed. So the best way, of course, is to do uh, angiography to prove the occlusion of aneurysm. Okay. What's about UVD? Do you use it in acute stage, and uh, in which uh, which uh, fissure grades do you use UVD? UVD we use in cases of uh, existing or uh, developing hydrocephalus with uh, uh, secondary deterioration. So we uh, do not uh, use. The ventricular drainage for prevention of hydrocephalus. We do lumbar puncture, we repeat this procedure and we believe it is helpful to for CSF sanation and for prophylaxis of chronic hydrocephalus in future. If acute hydrocephalus, we put AVD in case of ventricular megaly. If, if a patient has high grade hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, how do you control ICP? Uh, uh, empirically.
but but it's maybe very easy to put UED and control ICP. Maybe yeah, I mean but... more than the hunt has uh, more, more, I mean high high grade fish. I agree, but next problem is that patient uh, in the poor condition uh, and immunosuppressed, high rate of uh, infection could be prognosed in this case. We have very good intensive care, really good, and uh, renew it and after the repair, so it's clear. But in an, in this condition, we uh, what we really afraid is the intracranial secondary infection because the shunt placement. So we do it. We use the sterile anti reflow systems, uh, of course. But uh, I, I I avoid it as it uh, possible. In any case, it's possible. Maybe the okay. good approach because I understand how important it is to know about the intracranial pressure rate in, in these patients. Uh, but uh, what uh, can we change? Okay, we know that uh, intracranial pressure is extremely high and ventricles are split. And you have the drainage with proof for you with uh, number of intracranial pressure. So what's the next step? Decompression. Uh, you can control, I think, uh, I think uh, perfusion, perfusion uh, pressure and it's, it's mandatory. For for me, for example, uh, uh, hand has more than two. Always, I am putting EVD. I am always uh, controlling ICP. Uh, it's decreasing number of CT to transfer patients from ICU to CT. We have more information when patient is uh, in a in a comatose stage. I think uh, uh, my mean good results is increasing very. I uh, at least in my experience. In my hospital, uh, we did more than 500 uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage in acute stage, and we always EVD, and I like it very much. And we we don't have many 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 meningitis or some neuro infection. If uh, if uh, uh, cytosis is uh, growing uh, like more than 500, we always uh, uh, take out and put uh, uh, put uh, I mean uh, uh, lumbar drain. Or some uh, some serial puncture, and we don't have many many nerve infection, and it helps very much. I think, I think it's uh, it's also decreasing uh, aggressive vasospasm when you have good uh, good uh, perfusion pressure. At least in my hospital. Understood. Okay, and uh, uh, also. We have one question from uh, from a uh, neurosurgeon. Uh, she's from Georgia. Thank you. Does uh, thank you. Does not begin to encompass the level of uh, gratefulness and admi admiration I have for all the Ukrainian pe people in this time of uh, darkness. Thank you uh, for caring and sharing the light of knowledge and science. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madonna, for the Jesus, good Jesus. words and for your support. You. It's very important for us. What's about a web device? Do you use a web device in acute stage? Uh, in, my, in my institution, we have no uh, experience of web device. In Ukraine, uh, I think about 30 devices were implanted in Kiev and Dnipro wave. We got it uh, by the governmental support uh, for it, but uh, very few. Does we have a question? Uh, limits uh, the use of web device acute stage. Okay. Okay, I had a bad, uh, bad connection, but uh, as I understood, you don't use web device, intracellular yeah. device in acute stage. Uh, also, we don't use flow diverted in acute stage, as I, as I understood, yeah? Yes, uh, was used uh, uh, by me personally uh, once. Okay. After. 
bleeding after cutary bleeding of patient with uh, vertebral artery aneurysm. It was used, but uh, he has the equal vertebral arteries, and the point was that even thrombosis of this stent would be tolerated. So, okay. Professor Juha, do you have any question? Uh, I think you are left the meeting. Okay. Okay. What's about timing, uh, dear uh, dear Andre? What's about timing of surgery? Do you, do do you make surgery uh, like uh, uh, like urgent surgery or ultra early or uh, I mean in acute stage or sometimes you are waiting? Uh, do you, I mean do you the acute subarachnoid hemorrhage? It depends upon the time of patient admission, because in some cases we admit the patient uh, not just on the first day after initial hemorrhage. It's about um, uh, among our patients, about 7 or 8 percent uh, are the patients who were operated really on the day first by endovascular approach, of course. We do angiography, and if we have day two, three or more, we check the vessels, we check the angiospasm, and we weigh the possible risk of procedure. Patient condition, of course, if patient is uh, poor grade, we usually delay the surgery to cold period. If patient is uh, good grade, of course, we operate immediately the day after admission, at least, and uh, it's a rule. Patient grade three is most uh, uh, has the most discussions around these patients because uh, some uh, patient has the somatic problems that exacerbate the possible results of surgery, especially if we discuss the open surgery. So uh, if we can do endovascular approach, we can do hand has free. Uh, on the day of admission, the next day, if we have discussed, if we discuss the open procedure, we usually postpone it uh, to the day 12, day 14, under the uh, transcranial Doppler control. But what's about rebleeding during this stage? It's very high, the maybe. Control, the control arterial pressure, we can use short uh, course of tranexamic acid, day three or four days, not more, as it labeled in the uh, current guidelines. And 1% uh, per day, of course, this risk is, uh, exists. But if we operate upon the poor grade patient or grade three patient with some somatic problems like diabetes, like arterial hypertension, like renal problems, in these periods, the risk of Post-operative complications is much more higher when to wait and uh, operate on the cold period, in my opinion. Thank you. What, what would you like when you have a canalization? Uh, what are you doing? Do you, do you use a laser cut stand or sometimes clipping or sometimes uh, to add some coils again? Uh, what do you, what, what's about your strategy when you have a canalization? Yeah, understood. Uh, the most cases we just follow the patient. If we uh, talk about the uh, Raymond uh, Roy 3B, we can discuss the intervention. If it's the small neck remnant, we usually do not proceed with surgeries. If it's stable remnant, and uh, we do not need any further procedures to to uh, protect the doom. Uh, so in case of uh, free B, when we have some fundus uh, uh, opacification, uh, we discuss the possible coil placement with balloon support if the neck is wide. Or in a few cases uh, with giant aneurysm, recanalized aneurysms, we put a uh, flow diverter yeah, the aneurysm neck, it was, the aneurysm was protected by coils at this moment, and uh, we follow this patient again. Okay, do you have experience to use we local? Avoid, uh, yeah, we avoid very aggressive intrasacular manipulations. Okay. For the okay. 
Do you have experience to use low profile uh, laser cut and uh, flow dry urethers, laser cut stents and flow dry urethers like uh, Leo Baby or something? Uh, pipelines is our favorable, not because our comprehensive choice, but mostly because of uh, government and supply. Okay. But, uh, we think it's uh, quite good in uh, stents. The problem is just the poor visualization of the stent uh, itself. Okay. Okay. Does we have a question, uh, dear dear Hassan? Yeah, there is one more question, Jacob. On the okay. Chat okay. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, uh, do you usually allow twenty one days after ictus to clip aneurysm? I have noticed in my sense higher rates of complication, of clinical vasospan, a delayed cerebral ischemia in yearly clipping as compared in delayed clipping. <clears throat> Do you usually love 21 days after ictus? I have noticed my higher rate. Same question. We had, uh, if you use time, about timing, about... Uh, yeah, about of course, uh, as uh, you clip on the rhythm early, you just uh, make the additional risk for the vasospartum delayed ischemia. It could happen uh, in some percentage of cases even without surgery, and it's difficult to explain to relatives when after surgery a patient got paralyzed, but it's not your surgery that caused these disorders and just the natural course of disease. So here the surgeon is in the cage of uh, his uh, procedure, and uh, if you delay surgery, you are much more chilly and calm during operating because the risk of complication is much more lower. As uh, for our uh, experience, from 20% of post-operative fatal outcomes and severe disabilities to 5.4% on delayed period, it's quite a big difference. But 1% per day will rebleed, so about 14% of rebleeding rate could happen. So 14 plus uh, 5, it's same 20%. Just your post-operative results would be better. Yeah, okay. Personally, I think uh, actually um, I, I am favor uh, to, to clip uh, ultra early stage. And always I am uh, uh, treating aneurysm uh, fast 12 hour. And uh, I think it's, uh, you don't have, you don't have a spasm in this stage and your outcome is better when you are clipping or I mean, emboli uh, make embolization during the acute stage. And also you have adequate vasospasm treatment. Uh, fast, uh, if you are, if you, if you secure aneurysm fast, uh, 12 hour and most mostly in uh, in european uh, centuries they are doing like this also in turkey uh, also in usa always trying to to secure aneurysm first first 12 hour i think i think uh, you are in this stage you are more safe i think it's uh, it's i think uh, uh, nowadays no debate what do you think dear hassan uh, yeah, I actually I don't do aneurysm surgery, but as you say, uh, in Turkey, many people uh, choose the early treatment on aneurysm. Maybe not uh, early as you done ultra early, but usually on the same day. In the... But you have in your hospital near radiologist as yeah. on duty. Yeah, and they they can do it same day. Why not? Uh we we can uh, call him. He's not in the hospital, but they are not in hospital. Okay. Yeah, we can call him. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, uh, dear Andre. Uh, uh, I'm appreciate uh, your your speech. I I appreciate your your country. And uh, I wish to to be uh, to be uh, peace in your country. Uh, again, uh, 
uh, I would like to 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 be safe in your country and in your family. And thank you again uh, to, uh, to 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 give us uh, your speech. Thank you very much for attention, for your support. I hope uh, Jakob and uh, you, Hassan, will soon visit our country as anybody of our colleagues who want to do it. Uh, I just uh, will say the same thing. Uh, uh, I hope we see you in the real life in Libya or in Izmir. <laughs> Thank you. If you, if you come here, you are more more than welcome. Uh, we want to see you in Turkey, in Izmir. Anytime. Thank you very, very nice. Thank you for your cooperation uh, and uh, your invitation to this platform. It's a great honor and a great pleasure for me to see all people here and be. Uh, I want to thank you again, and I want to thank everyone who joined us today, this evening. Here. Thank you. Thank you, dear Hassan, to give me a chance to be a moderator uh, in, in this event today. And I, I hope uh, we will have some conference also in Georgia and we will make some scientific meetings in, in, in Georgia. Yeah, I want <laughs> with to. Andri and uh, with you and with our colleagues. Uh, I, 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 one, night, also. <laughs> one night in uh, Georgia only. Uh, I invite you, colleagues, invite you in the September 7th, 9th September, we will uh, uh, meet here in Lviv at the uh, Ukrainian Neurosurgical Conference. Each year we have it in different cities. This year we get, get the honor to make it in Lviv, so it will be a big uh, Ukrainian conference. I will share the information, maybe you will be able to come to present your results. It would be a pleasure for us to hear you. Thank you, you. Thank you for your invitation. I will end the meeting now. Thank you again.